Welcome everybody to Rob's Motor Works. We are having one hell of a time tonight, no pun intended, with the fellows from Hellstar. They are back in San Antonio, Texas. I have with me the man, Mr. Larry Berrigan and James Rivera. Welcome, gentlemen, back to Rob's. It's been some time and no better time to get you back because it seems like Hellstar is raising its ugly head again in the metal scene with something so fabulous and we're gonna get there okay we're gonna get there welcome James Rivera thank you sir oh, um, man. yeah it's, it's it's amazing how we've transformed over 30 years from one side to another musically and now where we're at now we're going kind of going back to what we used to be but not just because we don't want to like, oh, you know, how can you relive those years? That's ridiculous to think, oh, yeah, we can't write something like that back in the 80s. Well, no, we don't want to. And I think the new album of Ben Beetle is the best that we've ever done in our lives. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Welcome back, uh, Larry Bergen, my good, dearest friend. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. And you know that, man. It, <laughs> always, always when I do interviews with this guy, it's just like, oh, God. Man, that's my friend. You know, it's like I don't. I can't, I can't be serious. I can't be, you know, no. But I will try. <laughs> There's been changes in the band, and I think one of the things that people have not heard about true fans of Hellstar who know about the band, um, and I was an integral part in the reunion of Hellstar back in uh, 2006. And Rob Trevino, the original guitar player from Remnants of War, was part of that reunion. And now kind of Rob Trevino is out. So I don't think I ever, no, I never heard anything about Rob Trevino's departure from the band. Um, Rob is, is still very near and dear to us. He was at the show last night. Um, he, he's still an amazing friend to me. He's, you know, when, when we said, you know, brother from another mother, you know, it was from the heart. You, you know, we, we, we're not, I'm not joking around about that. It, it came to a, a point where he just said, you know, guys, I just, I need to walk away. It's my time. And so we were heartbroken, but at the same time, we understood. But James and I are not ready to walk away. So when he said, you know, I, I, I yeah, I think it's time. And I said, okay, bro. It, you know, we understood that. Prior to that, Andrew Atwood, who is our new guitarist, had already started doing the out-of-town gigs with Hellstar because Rob had other commitments that he just couldn't do those out-of-town gigs. And so Andrew came in and, and he, you know, he did a fabulous job. And then when Rob finally, it was almost like the heir apparent. You know, because Rob said, okay, well, I'm walking out, and Andrew knows everything. And I said, well, why should we even put it out there? You know, that, that, that Andrew is, you know, why should we even try out anybody else? Because we were very comfortable with Andrew. And obviously, Garrick had already been in the band for a while now, too. And it just made sense. And so, you know, exit Rob Trevino. And enter, you know, Andrew Atwood, you know. We rely on his expertise as sort of a producer, sort of, because he's like, Rob. we send Rob Trevino, we send everything, and he sits at home, and he listens to it, and he goes, dude, fucking killer, or change that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So he is kind of a ghost member. That's the way I like to look at Rob oh, Trevino. Cool, cool. That's my heart for Rob, and we talked about it, you know, and he goes, dude, I go, yeah, you're never never going to be out of this band. You know that. And one day when we, you play in Houston and you have the time and you want to go and play a song, <laughs> you're welcome to. Yeah, yeah. Because he's there sitting there going, yeah, well, because Larry and him always exchange ideas. So he's still producing, in a sense. So he's really not out of the band. He's out of the band physically, but not spiritually and emotionally and mentally, because he still wants us to be the best that we can be. Because that's his thing. He really is very passionate. Like, and last night he told us, or he told me, that's the best I've ever seen you guys live ever, man. So let's talk about the new guys. I was, I told uh, Andrew tonight, I said, man, this is the first time I've ever seen you with the band. And you guys were so fucking tight tonight. God, it was like, oh, like, 
I, I was watching, bro, and I've seen Hellstar shows for 20 years already, and you guys did not skip a fucking note tonight. You know, I mean, uh, Andrew came in, and the funny thing about Andrew is that he's a fan, first and foremost. Cool. And so, um, when he joined, he, he was like, oh, yeah, I, I have to do this, you know, as a, uh, as a fan. And so th the new album, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward to the new oh, album. God. I'm sorry, but but okay, I had to fast okay. forward to the new album. But it, he brought that element of this is what I want to hear as a fan of Hellstar. I want to hear something like this, and so that's how he wrote it. He's like, as a fan, I want to write something that I want to hear, and so. You know, we, we I don't want to say we strayed, but we, we, we've expanded into where we were doing a lot of thrash type stuff. Yeah. Andrew and Garrick both playing in a band called Scourge. So they always jam together. Yeah. And so there's that element that, you know, they, yeah, they're already tight together. And then they come in and it's just this juggernaut kind of thing of, of like, man, you know, we, we're, we go to rehearsal and and we go through the songs like once or twice like well we got we're it. done you know and then like just go home you know and the musicianship is you know it's up here and not say anything about rob or or you know i mean rob is a great guitar player andrew is an awesome addition to the band and i think it's every time we've had a lineup change it's it's uh, we james and i have always wanted it to be and an elevation of the band you know we, we we've never wanted to be like okay well you know there's this guy's okay we'll just like hash through it no that's not what we want yeah yeah but he purposely writes for my vocal style because he's a fan yeah. that's what's amazing about this kid yeah i'm like He's like, I know, you, you know, the reason why I write this way is because I want you to, I know you're going to sing it this way. And I'm like, holy shit. When we were working in my apartment on stuff, he's like, I'm like, he's a true fan. Yeah. You know, I was a big fan of your last relief, This Wicked Nest, okay? Oh, yeah. Those were some great tracks, okay? Oh, that put us back on track again. A great record, okay? However, I kind of felt that there was not a lot of support on the back end for this wickedness that there was not a lot of touring there was not a lot of support from the label on this wickedness and i just kind of feel like the record came out it it, it it got exposed fans heard it and then it fell by the way said correct me if i'm wrong is that is that is that your opinion that's my, you're completely right that's why we decided not to re-sign with the label we were already on the on the verge of just doing our own label, which changed because of Dave Ellison's relationship with me, yeah. and started his label, and he made a deal that was better than starting our own label because you got to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just tired of the way that the will has been invented. You know what? You never seen anything there. Yeah, yeah, we'll promote you, but no, they don't do shit. Yeah, you know, and that's, to me, it's like I can hire somebody for $20,000. Well, I don't want to say they don't do shit. They do, but they do the beer minimum. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and, and AFM was, they were okay. But I think we may have outgrown them. How soon after that conclusion did you say, hey, let's start writing for a new record. Let's start writing for Vampiro. How soon did that happen? When he when he when he created his own studio, Mikey had his own studio. We're like, hey, you know what? We'll just we'll find a way to do this on our own. And if not, somebody will come. And if not, we'll just do it on our own because we're tired of that. You know, just yeah, you know it, that's that's what happened. And and then the record's coming out better than anything we've ever done with the writing that all the, the members are contributing. That's when I sat back and I was like, Larry. We got to hold off. We got, you know what, just, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then here comes Dave Ellison. <laughs> so one of the things that we definitely have to talk about is the return of the vampire theme to the new release. Okay, Nosferatu came out in 1988. What? Oh, let me, let me. Yes, sir. Okay, so Nosferatu came out in '88. The return of the vampire theme for Vampiro 2016. Why was it the right time to release 
uh, another vampiric theme for a Hellstar record? Okay, first of all, uh, James and I talk about when we start writing lyrics. You know, we're, we're we we consider ourselves the main lyric writers, right? And so James is like, you know, the original the original idea was like, okay, we're gonna do Mexican American horror. That was the original story. No, we we were we, we thought about doing like El Cucuy, La Llorona, and, and, and no 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 we, we we said like let's do an album like that, and then we started researching and, and which is what we always do, and it was like oh there's just not enough. Right right. There's not enough, and then there was a band out there that was doing like some kind of like vampire thing, yeah. and James like heard about it. He was like oh. Hell, dude, we were the first. Yeah. Why would, you know, why would we do that? You know, why would we let somebody, you know, come in and go, and, and all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, we did, you know, Dracula. It's like, yeah, yeah. no, dude, we did that back in 88. 88, you know? And then Christopher Lee died. Right. And then it was like, oh no. Oh, now, now, every, now the stars are aligning. And we said, yeah. he, he, he came, he said, why don't we do a bunch of songs about Vampire. just vampirism uh, like most of, the most of the Christopher Lee movies let, let's do the songs about like Christopher Lee movies well so was it like a new approach to the vampire theme or did yeah. you say like let's piggyback off Nosferatu no no no, 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 no it was no piggyback no, no it's not piggyback it's the same concept but different yeah yeah but we were focusing on Christopher Lee now yeah and when Larry wrote Black Cathedral he you know we watched that movie together and that what movie? What movie? It's the blood of Dracula. Yeah. That was like Christopher Lee. Ah, you know that was the one, and it was like, and I don't know how it happened. It was the first song we ever recorded, but it sounded like I, I knew I knew it somehow in my heart that has to be the single, it, yeah. it, because it, it described everything musically the band was doing. When 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 we fully committed. And I told James, like, this is going to be hard because we're not just going to write about, a, it's not going to be a continuation of a story. We're going to have to pick apart a bunch of different movies and figure out, like, what we're going to do. And at first we said, oh, we'll do a, a song about every movie. And then it came to the, yeah, to the point where we said, yeah, it was just like, no, dude, uh, it's too hard. It's like taking a book and making it into a movie. Yeah. It doesn't work. So taking a whole movie and making it into a song wasn't going to work either. So we, so I said, James, I think we need to pick scenes from our favorite movies, and then, and then, yeah, yeah, and then we'll yeah, write yeah, about yeah. Uh, Bathory, uh, what's her name, and then Andrew wrote a bunch of really cool stuff that's involved with vampires, but totally different. So yeah, yeah. It, I know. So it's like, wow. So we didn't, we never got trapped in that thing where, oh. I wanted. I originally I did want it to be about all the Christopher Lee horror films, yeah. but that would be impossible. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we'd be repeating stuff over and over yeah, and yeah, over yeah. again. Because Christopher Lee, he he lives yeah, and then he dies, and then he lives and then he dies, and then he oh, lives and then he dies. So it was just like, you know, okay, there's there's just not enough substance to you know do a whole song on. Okay, he lived and he like he lived and it's like let's take a scene the best scene and or whatever touched us and let's do a song about that one scene and so uh, you know Black Cathedral is about a certain scene within yeah, the movie that's it. and it's a wicked scene. yeah it's a wicked scene and we wrote about that it was easier for us to do and then so there, there's a song uh, on the new album called uh, To Dusty Will Return to dust you will return. I'm sorry, China. Oh, that's about that. And and that's about um, the little girl in Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've ever seen she Kristen Dunst. Yeah. 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 So she she. she <laughs> <laughs> so she 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 she, uh, she she double crosses yeah. her maker, yeah, yeah, and then she meets up the, with the vampires in Paris, they're and then they're like, okay, yeah. you know, then it's gonna be, to kill her too. yeah. <laughs> then it's like, okay, now well, now we're we're gonna put you out in the sun, and you're gonna turn into yeah. ash, yeah, yeah. and so that's how we approached it after yeah, that, yeah. you know, like, okay, this is this is much easier to do this. And then you know the the right the writing kind of flowed after that, and then we weren't so we were I was very petrified at first because I felt like man we're in this box, 
and how are we going to pull this off and then not be like Nosferatu at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my whole thing is like anybody can do what they've already done. Yeah. That's easy. You've right, already right, right, done right, right, it. Right, 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 you know, right, right. the hard right. thing with, with Hellstar is that I've always wanted to do something different on every album. I don't want I, know that. I don't want I don't want to re return to Burning Star. I don't want to return to Remnants of War. I don't want to return to any of those albums. But there's an element of your style that has to be on, on all the albums, sure. you know. Um, and, and we all know you can do different things now. So talk a little bit about how you approached your vocal style with Vampiro. Did you want to kind of reminisce with Nosferatu or did you kind of want to do... I, I wanted it to be more operatic and uh, dramatic because it, we, we actually, when we were recording everything, with uh, Larry's writing and Andrew's writing, we wanted it to sound like it did with Nosferatu. I mean, we went back I to like the that. operatic, you know, like, yeah, we used the scales that I hadn't used in a while, yeah. but I still threw in the evilness. Yeah. But that's the thing that we were focusing on, because we don't want to, see, you can't go back and redo what you did 30 years ago, okay. completely. I mean, you know, for me to sing like Pavarotti, so the whole thing would be boring. So all we wanted to do was kind of capture a lot of that movement. And, you know, they were the best at, I mean, most of the songs that we did in the studio was Andrew and Larry producing and going, do that, yeah, do that, you know, we're all getting boners, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a take, you know. So we all went back and go, so what we were looking for was that element again but but what we are now yeah, yeah. and that's what made us doing what we're doing now and nobody's even heard the rest of the songs yet oh, wait till you hear andrew so. hear <laughs> and also i mean it kind of seems as of late there's there's just been a string of great good luck for hellstar and one of the one of the things that of course people have been talking about is now you know we talked about you know maybe some of the disappointments that you had with AFM. Now you're signed to a new label, Vampiro. We released on the EMP label, uh, which of course is owned by David Ellison of uh, Megadeth. Of course, um, talk a little bit about how the signing with EMP happened. Well, you know, Dave and I go back since the Japanese bomb for Harbor. You know, well, we toured with them in '86, and uh, we stayed friends. And then um, he uh, came, you know, somehow I always stayed in touch with him for some reason. And when he came through one time, he goes, hey, I'm going to start producing bands. Yeah. And then I said, oh, really? He goes, yeah. Then that's when he semi-produced Multiples, Multiples of Black. Black. Yeah. So then that happened. And then years went by. And every time he came through town, hey, I'm coming through, man. You're on the list. Hang out, blah, 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 you know. So I always kind of hung out with the Megadeth guys. Then he was out of Megadeth. Yep. Then he and I got into a project called Killer Machine. Yep. I mean, one of the best records I've ever done in a while is a Judas Priest kind of thing. Yep. We thought, oh, wow, this is going to take off. And it was Jimmy DeGrasso as well. Yep. So it was the whole rhythm section of yep. Megadeth. Yeah. And then, you know, that happened. And then he got back in Megadeth. Yep. I was really happy for him. I knew that was the best thing for him, which I'm really happy for him. Look at how big he is now. And then he starts the label, and a good friend of ours named Joe Troutman, San Diego, who Dave was his preacher for his wedding, and I went to the wedding. So we spent a weekend together. So he's got really close relationships with this Joe Troutman, who takes us to San Diego for shows. And I said, you know, and Joe started asking me, well, what's going on with the future of Hellstar? So, well, we're off AFM. We're thinking about starting our own label. We're tired of everybody's bullshit. Do you know that Dave started a label? I mean, he's going to be here in two days. Let me talk to him. Next thing you know, he talks to Dave. Dave's like, no brainer. I need a band that's going to, I don't need a nurse. It's got a name. It was like that. It was did he not need? Did he say like, "Oh, well, let me hear some of y'all new stuff"? No. He's like, oh, it's, it's Hellstar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know these guys are gonna, yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, I'm interested. I got you on the list. Let's talk in Houston. So when yeah, they came yeah. to Houston for the show, me and Garrick went backstage, and then we already we already had discussed the issues of the contract. Yeah. 
So when I went to the show, I had the contract and he was there and he goes, you ready to sign? I go, I had all the pictures and everything. I go, yep, let's do it. He goes, it's, very, it's a very sweet, simple deal where we'll finally see royalties. Nice. Yeah, they'll make money, but so will we. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the main object of the game. Yeah. And the whole team. And then we get led to Alpha Omega Management. Yep, let's talk about that. It just goes on and on and on. You know, Bill Matoyer. Bill Matoyer is also produced. He did he producing or mixing yeah, Vampiro? Mixing. Larry Larry produced it. Yeah. Okay, Larry produced, and you guys produce, but Bill's mixing uh, Vampiro. Is he doing that right now? Is that what's oh, happening yeah. right now? Well, yes. And and what actually what Bill is doing, it's really weird because what, what's happening with Bill is, you know, we had been already talking to him like, hey, Bill, you know, maybe you mix the album, whatever. I'll send you some rough mixes of what I have. And so I sent him, sent him some rough mixes, and, and he was like, this is good. Yeah, I mean, this is, I don't really have to do too much to this, Larry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I've always been like, oh, dude, I, I really, it's okay, but I need that, it needs that extra. Punch, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, so Bill agreed to like, okay, well, I will be that guy that, you know, takes your mix and takes it to the next level. And then I'll, you know, he's also going to uh, do the mastering as well. And when we send him Black Cathedral, he was like, "Dude, this is this is really good." <laughs> and so he, he took my mix and he changed a few things. And when I listened to, it, I was like, "God, what'd you do?" He's like, "Not too much, <laughs> you know." But, but, but you're I, still paying me the same. Yeah, you're gonna, you're still gonna <laughs> pay me. No, no. But to me, it was like huge yeah, because yeah, yeah. I could tell the, the difference in like, uh, yeah. you know, how the vo vocals sat in the mix, how the bass sits in the mix, yeah, and yeah. the drums and, and whatnot. So. You know all the things that I, I felt were important important for um, for the album to, to be elevated to that level where when people listen to it it's like oh man this is good this is a good production yeah yeah and that's important to me and you know it's important to Bill and so we've been slowly working and, and we've known him forever and I you know I hung out with him at Nam and we got drunk and didn't really talk about in business or whatever it was just like w w with when you and I hang out, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, we yeah. hardly ever really talk about this stuff. Yeah. And it was the same thing with Bill. And then when we finally was like, well, Bill, you know, you're going to do this? And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, are you going to pay me? I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you know, you know, Bill did the Nosferatu record. So, you know, I mean, you guys, I guess, could have chosen a handful of guys to kind of mix the record. I mean, did you just kind of feel like, oh, let's... It felt right to go back to Bill Motoyer. We have a relationship with him. I and mean, why did you why did you go back to Bill? I mean, kind of doing that again. Well, I mean, we actually had talked to another producer who yeah. had done another album with yeah. us, and uh, it just it just didn't happen, you know. And then when we we started talking to Bill, and he was very excited about it. And when I started sending him stuff, he he said, "I, I want to do this. Let's do this." And I said, okay, you know send us what you got and then you know like the first few rough mixes that he sent back to me I was like you know what why you know Bill Matoyer yeah, yeah, yeah. you know Slayer you know Face Warning all the all the bands that you've heard Bill do and 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 you know um, it was it it may seem like oh they're trying to recap recapture you know Nosferatu but that that's not really our intention our intention is to make a mix and in, in, in that that people are going to enjoy listening to, yeah, yeah. and I think that Bill is actually that person that can get it to that point where, right. you know, everybody will love listening to it. Right. You know, and it's important to us. You know, you know me. Uh, the 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 musicianship is is paramount. That's that's first and foremost, and. You know, you, you listen to albums, you think, oh, yeah, it sounds okay, I don't like the snare, I don't like, you know, the bass didn't come out, oh, you know, snare doesn't sound great, the guitars are dull or whatever like that, you know. So, I didn't want that, you know, especially for this album where I felt like the material is so strong, I don't want it to be this album where people are like, well, it was okay, you know. No, I want people to like listen to it and go like, wow, wow this is 
surpasses anything that I thought would happen. I think we already feel like that with the, just the release of Black Cathedral. You know, and, and the response has been that. You know, it's yeah. been it's been really really good. It's yeah. been beyond what I thought would be the response to Black Cathedral. It's like I look at Facebook and and we follow the media and we're just like, hey man, you know this this is really taking off. We played the song last night, and you know. The, uh, I had friends come out and go like, dude, that song went over really well. And tonight, you know, there was a lot of people that were like, oh, I've never heard it. And there was people that had heard it. Oh, yeah. And they were like, oh, you know, yeah. this badass. And so, you know, that's just the beginning of it, you yeah, know. Yeah. So. so tonight, uh, you know, you guys are playing these shows, you know, a couple of shows in support of the single. Now, uh, Vampiro will come out in August. What is the plan to support Vampiro? I mean, what do you want to do? Well, there's talk about going to South America for a couple of weeks. Um, we'll probably do that. Let me, I don't want to say a couple of weeks. It's probably going to be like eight, nine shows. And then uh, obviously go back to Europe. And then just we're just probably going to do like a bunch of like fly-in shows here in the States. Like New York, California, Florida. Uh, maybe like some Chicago shows. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so Midwest and stuff. Um, and then just, you know, see where it takes us and stuff, you know, um, everybody has, I mean, everybody has like a vision and a dream of uh, like, where, where, where can we go? And this is like the first time where I felt like, man, I'm not sure where, where I am professionally in like my other life. I'm just like, man, I, I may not, I may not want to go back. I may want to do this. Because it's that. You told me that. You've told me that, and yeah, yeah, in yeah. our beer conversations, like Rob, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retire and do Hellstar full time. Well, I'm, I'm talking about like maybe taking a, a sabbatical or something and yeah. doing this, you yeah. know. And so it's, it's been, in, it, it's been an amazing kind of journey, like writing this album and starting recording it and just like seeing it come to life and going like, oh no, th this is not typical this is actually is very special. very very different very yeah, very yeah. special yeah. and I think that uh, I feel that the the, the true Hellstar fans a lot of those fans in, in Europe that have been like oh, I just want I just want to hear something a little more melodic a little more yeah. you know I want to hear James sing I don't want to hear him sing you know do like all the you know the screeching and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. which you know me personally and I'm gonna I'm gonna set the res record straight Same. right here is that if I listen to uh, the, if I listen to the label or if I listen to a fan? I, I actually had a fan who was uh, upset with me because I was like, dude, what do you, you know? He he said, well, I like that album, but I want the you know the next album to be like this. And he was like kind of down on me, and I was like, dude, you know, if you you're gonna come on my page and like <laughs> like trash me, fuck off, right. you know? And and he was like, oh, I thought you want to hear what the fans have to say. It's like, no, I really don't because. If I listen to you, or if I listen to the label, or if I listen to just, you know, somebody in general that like, yeah, yeah. I want you to write this, I want you to be heavy. No, I want you to be melodic. I want you to be, you know, uh, more speed metal. I want you to do more thrash. I would, it's, I'd never write anything. Yeah, yeah. Because you're just like in the middle going like, well, what does everybody want me to do? And so in the end, it's, uh, it's always been this thing where I, I just felt like the only, the only one I really, really have to listen to is me and James and the rest of the band. If we're happy, then, you know, the fans aren't stupid. They're going to be like, okay, this is good. If, we, if, we, if I feel it's good, I'm hoping that the fans feel like this is good. And so... Well, there was, there was, defi there was definitely a lot of happy fans tonight here in San Antonio. Oh my God. I told you guys before we started rolling that tonight's Hellstar was the tightest Hellstar I've seen in quite some time. Oh God, it sounded so fucking good. And James sounded great. And I mean, it was just like, it was like at the pinnacle. Like you guys, just, you know, no one would ever thought you guys have been around for, for 30 plus years now. No, I mean, the, the machine's rolling, you know, and, and it's a train, you know, and, and the, like, you know, there's been some times where somebody goes like, oh, well, you guys had this guy, or if you just went back to this or whatever, and I was like, dude, that this train was rolling when those guys joined. The band has always been, 
you know, James identifies the band. Right. When I listen to James sing on other albums, I still feel like, like it sounds like Hellstar. <laughs> you know? I just feel like that, you know? It depends what band. <laughs> Never mind. Which is why I never put out an official Hellstar album, no matter how many lineup changes I went through without Larry. That's right. That's Larry right. That. that is right. <laughs> he, he, he did me right. He did me right. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> and that is true. Everything about the family. We went through a lot of death this weekend. His grandma passed His grandma away. Passed that, yeah, yeah. So I was a pallbearer. Why? Because I've been involved in that family for a long time. And well, to we've me, we've all been part of the Hellstar family for a long time. Exactly. So I'm that, so happy that we, we had an opportunity to do this beautiful. interview tonight. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, we're going to write stuff for the next 20 years. Oh, God. Yeah. Woo! You might change our diapers, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there and I'll do it for you. Thank you guys so much for this wonderful, wonderful interview. Oh, my God. I don't even want to ask how long it's been. But you know what? Uh, it, edit, edit, edit. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it's all worth it. You guys, um, you know how I feel about you. You guys are legends in Texas. All the you know, happy birthday, belated birthday to you, Mr. Rivera. Thank you. You it's know, great to be able to uh, to be able to drink legally. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's like, I got. Oh God. I hate it. <laughs> you know, and you know, uh, you know when I said, you know, your legacy will live on it will, man. You're a beautiful, your voice and for I sing better than I ever did in my yeah, life yeah. and to me that's a blessing. You know, I mean, it's, it's it's not that easy to get up there in age and then be able to do all these things. How many people have we seen Peter out? A lot. Lots. <laughs> you have not. I have not. And one of the one of we have not. Yeah. And well, that's the thing. Let me end out by saying I always use the word legendary when I talk about Hellstar. You know why? Because to me, legendary doesn't only express longevity. Legendary to me represents longevity and consistency. And you guys have always, always consistently delivered great music to the fans between you two thank you it means a lot to me brother and that is the truth that is the truth remember everyone out there another one for self oh, seven deliver the gods <laughs> remember everyone out there the brand new hell star is coming out in august it's going to be called vampito out on the emp label be sure to google it look it up buy it in august when it comes out you're watching Rob's Metal Works. Yeah.